Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to set up quad style arming on your radio. And you don't need a flight computer or any kind of stabilizer for this to work. It's simply going to be done in Logic on OpenTX. If you've ever flown a quad or any kind of aircraft with a flight computer or some sort of stabilizer, they normally have a arming function that involves moving the sticks together inward or outward or some combination thereof. And as I thought about Logic on OpenTX, I thought for people who are used to flying quads, they might prefer an arming scenario just like that one. So I came up with a Logic scenario on OpenTX that allows you to activate your throttle and deactivate your throttle using a combination of sticks. There are three things we need to care for in order to make this work. The first one is we need a logical switch arrangement that allows us to evaluate the condition of the sticks and light up when the sticks are in a state that we want to use for a, either a throttle cut or a throttle activation. The second thing we have to do is enable special functions to execute the throttle cut and announce the state of the throttle activation or deactivation. And then finally, we need to run a test on the radio. That's number three. All right, let's get started. For those of you who follow my OpenTX tutorials, you know I like to do the work in OpenTX Companion on the desktop first. It just makes testing and configuration much easier. That's where we're going to start today. If you don't know how to install Companion, I suggest looking for some of my earlier tutorial videos that cover downloading and installing OpenTX Companion and setting it up to work with your radio. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. For the rest of you, you can see that I've got a model open in Companion and I'm on the logical switches screen. I want to start by pointing out the fact that we're dealing with four control surfaces. We've got throttle, rudder, in my case in mode 2 on the left, and then we've got elevator and aileron on the right. So the, those are four surfaces that we're interested in examining and we have to reduce that down to two because the two is a combination of the stick on the left and the stick on the right. So on the left stick we need to take two controls and when two surfaces are where we want them that becomes one indicator. And then on the right hand side when we have two controls, the elevator and the aileron where we want them, that also becomes an indicator. So now we've reduced it from four discrete surfaces down to two indicators. And then when both of those indicators occur at the same time, we're reducing our equation again from two to one. When that happens, we want a light. We want the radio to say, hey, all four surfaces are where they're supposed to be. So we have a single light occur when that happens. And that's the logic map that I've set up on the screen. I also want to point out, you'll notice in L1, L2, L3, and L4, I'm using the absolute values of X. Now, this is important because in this particular configuration, you can use any combination of sticks. You can have this one up and away and this one in and down. It doesn't matter. What's going to happen is this evaluation criteria will become positive any time the stick deflection is 95. It doesn't matter if it's left or right. It's irrelevant. In your case, if you just want down and in to be your criteria, then you'll need to set your values instead of using absolute values to be the actual values. So in some cases you might use a negative, some cases you might use a positive. I use the absolute values just as a proof of concept and so that everybody watching this can make it work right away. The other thing that I have to throw out as a caveat is that rates will influence this. So if your highest rate is 80 and you're using a value of 95, it'll never work. So if your highest rate is 80, set your values to 80. If your highest rate is 60, set your values to 60. The point is that rates will influence this. So be aware of that. And that actually can be an additional safety measure that says you only want to be able to activate and deactivate when your rates are high. All right, let's get into the logical functions. Starting with logical one, I have the absolute value of X for the throttle being 95. So what that means is when the throttle is in any condition that meets 95, either all the way down or all the way, basically all the way down or all the way up. 100 is all the way up or down. But when my throttle is at 95 or greater on the up or down side of its movement, logical one will go active. So let's take a look at that in simulator and just see it in play. So we're looking at logical one right now. 
throttle disabled. There you go. And my throttle is all the way down at zero. And you can see logical one over here is lit. Now, if I move the throttle off of the ground, off of the floor, logical zero one goes away. It goes off. If I move it all the way up past 95, you can see the logical one goes active again. Okay, so that's what's happening with logical one. Logical two is the rudder. Now, notice there's an and switch. By itself, logical one will go on anytime I'm at 95. So 95 on the top or bottom, logical one goes on. Logical two says when the rudder is at 95 or greater, go on. But notice that it's anded with logical zero one, which means the throttle also has to be at a 95, either up or down. So notice if I swing the rudder left or right, logical two does not go on. And it won't go on until the throttle is also at 95. So if I bring this stick all the way down here, you'll watch what happens. One and two will go on at the same time. Okay. The reason that happened is because the criteria for logical two says when the throttle is at 95 and the rudder is at 95, go ahead and activate. So in this case, I'm going to lock the stick here. In this case, we've got logical one and logical two are both lit. Now, logical two becomes the interesting switch. That means the combination is satisfied on the left stick. We, that means we have the stick where we want it on the left side in order to activate. Now let's look at logical three and four. It's the same concept. I have the absolute value of X for the elevator being set at 95. So for logical three, watch logical three over here. When I move the elevator, which is on channel two, up and down, anytime I hit 95, logical three activates. Okay, on logical four, that is anded with logical three. So logical four is the aileron and it is set for 95, but I have an and condition and the and condition is logical three. So if I bang the aileron over here left and right, nothing happens. It doesn't light because logical three is not lit. When I move my elevator all the way down and then move my aileron to 95, logical four will activate. See that? Logical four goes on, logical four is off, on, off. There we go. That is a logic that allows us to say we have a condition now that when our sticks are where we want them, we have two interesting lights. That brings us to logical switch number five. In logical switch number five, I set up an edge switch, which if you remember is just a momentary switch. And on that momentary switch, I'm looking at logical switch number two and logical switch number four. When both of those are active for two seconds. You notice I have a two in the V2 field right here. When logical two and four are active for two seconds, I want logical five to blink. So watch logical five when I make two and four lit for two seconds. 1001, 1002, there we go. Active. Number five blinked and seven i'll get to that in a moment but notice that five blinked so i'm going to move the stick over here again and i'm going to bring it back down throttle okay. disabled so five blinked now one thing i want to point out you'll notice that you have l02 and l04 in order for the first evaluation to be released l02 which is a throttle rudder you have to make that situation that logical switch has to go off if you don't have it go off L02 doesn't reevaluate on the edge switch. That's real simple to do. Just let go of the stick. So once you've activated or deactivated your throttle, all you have to do is let go of the stick. And once you've let go, let go of the stick, L02 resets and the edge will be reevaluated next time it occurs. Okay. Now the last step in all of this is a sticky switch. Now think of a sticky switch, just like a light switch in your house, just like a light, just like a two position switch, take a switch. It's on, it's off. The criteria for the sticky is L05. Remember, L05 is a momentary that lights after two seconds. So when L05 goes on, L07 activates. And it stays activated until L05 goes on again. Once L05 goes on again, it deactivates. So watch how that manifests itself. I'm going to close the simulator and I'm going to restart it and I want you to pay attention to L07. So keep an eye over here for L07 and you'll notice that when we start, it starts in the off state. And the reason it'll start in the off state is because we haven't hit V1, which is L05. So just let me reset the simulator and watch L07 when it comes back up. So there's the simulator away and here it is open.
And notice L07. Throttle disabled. There we go. Throttle disabled. See, we got a throttle disabled notice from the computer. L07 is off. Okay, so that condition, remember that for later. When L07 is not on, we want that to be our throttle deactivation. Okay, we'll cover that in a moment, but let's go ahead and go through the activation process on the throttle a couple times so you can see it work. I'm going to lock my sticks again so I can let them go. I'm going to move my right stick all the way down, and you can see on the outputs now, I've got channel 2 and channel 5. I think my, yeah, this is a dual aileron setup, so 1 and 5 both work. But anyway, I'm looking at the aileron input. So I have channel 2 and channel 5 both meeting the criteria. L04, that's our interesting switch on the right-hand stick, is lit. Now I'm going to move my throttle and rudder to an interesting position. That lights two, five the toggles, active. and seven goes on. That's the sticky. So right now the throttle is active. Now I'm going to go fly my airplane and notice channel three. I've got control of the throttle. See my output over here? I've got control of the throttle. So I go up, I go down, that's my throttle. Now let's say I get on the ground, I land the plane, and I want to lock the throttle again. I bring this stick back down to the interesting position. Throttle disabled. Five is the momentary switch. After two seconds, it activates and it disables the throttle. Now watch my watch my channel three output. I'm going to move my throttle stick and see the throttle doesn't move. It's locked. I'm going up and down. Throttle's locked. If I want to activate again, it doesn't matter where this stick is. I can always put it right back here. And then I drag this one back down to the interesting position. Throttle active. Throttle goes active, seven lights, and there we go. Now, just to prove the point, because I'm using absolute values, I can use any combination of corners I want. I can put this one all the way up and this one all the way over. Throttle disabled. You see that? Because I'm using absolute values. I can bring this one all the way in and this one all the way up. Throttle active. Okay. If I just want to use the inside corners, I have to look at the values. So in this case, I would have a negative throttle one. Disabled. I'd have a negative 100 on throttle, and I'd have a 100 on rudder. Yep, 100 on rudder, negative 100 on throttle. And throttle I, active. And on this side, I would have a negative 100 on both aileron and elevator. So if I hard-coded these values, 100, negative 100, negative 100, negative 100, if I hard-coded that in my logic up top, then the only corners that would work would be these down and in positions. That covers step number one. Let's look at step number two, which are special functions. In step number two, remember I told you when the simulator first starts, logical seven is not activated. So I'm using the not L07 to override channel three, which is my throttle, and I'm setting that value to negative 100, and I put a check mark in the on box at the end. The reason we're doing that is because when the radio first turns on and loads the model, L07 is not active, and because of that, I want channel three set to a value of negative 100, which effectively kills the throttle, and I have a check mark in here to enable that. I also have not L07 playing the track, throttle disabled. Throttle, throttle disabled. disabled. There you go. And I have that set for no repeat. I only use no repeat because I want to hear that the throttle is disabled when I turn on the radio or turn on this model. And then when L07 goes active, we play the track, throttle active. Throttle, throttle active. We want that played once, not during startup, but honestly, it should never play during startup. Okay, so these three special functions are what give us the override to cut off the throttle and they announce the state of the throttle cut as we activate and deactivate the throttle cut. The last thing to do is test it on the radio and I've already used Companion to push this configuration down to my TX16S, so I'm just gonna show you how this works on the radio. Notice this icon right here is a lock icon. Right now my throttle is being overridden by special function number one. When I bring these sticks together, listen to the radio. Throttle active. There we go, throttle active. My throttle cut is gone. And as I move my throttle up and down, you can see that my output and my mix both travel together. The gray line is the mixer. The red line is the channel output. Now when I activate the throttle cut, I'll bring the sticks together again. 
the throttle is disabled, my throttle cut icon reappears, and when I move the throttle, you'll see movement on the mixer, which is the gray line, but not the output, which is the red line. Okay, that's how you test it on the radio to make sure your throttle lock works. Well, there you go, guys. Now you know how to set up a quad-style arm and disarm system on any radio using OpenTX. You don't need a computer. You don't need a flight computer. This just works in logic. I hope you found the content interesting. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel. Don't forget to check out my affiliate links and my t-shirt store. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.